right? So now when you go meet your mate, all right, the child's already in motion. The child is coming. Your mate don't see it yet because you ain't even met him. But y'all sing that song. This is why we have to be in tune with one another. You follow me? Okay, so now you're singing that song and you're sitting under that tree. Then now you meet your mate. So now when you meet your mate and y'all come together, guess what you do? You teach him that song. You teach him that song so now you and your mate and the child, unborn, all right, knows the song. Knows the vibratory frequency of the song, the pitch, all three of y'all in key. All right? Now when the child comes forth, it's not you that call the child forth because you ain't got nothing to do with it. The child is up. It makes a revolutionary turn and decides to come when it decides to come. Right or wrong? Now the child comes into the world, already knowing the song. The child already knows how to pull on the pressure. You ain't got to teach the child that, right or wrong. It already instinctively knows that. So there's some intelligence there already that you ain't even got to bother the child. Leave the child alone. So now all three of y'all are there, and you're all in sync, and you're all singing this song. So now when you go to breastfeeding, the naming ceremony don't have to come yet. All right? Because you ain't came to your right senses, because you're probably still trying to figure some things out. The naming ritual will come a little bit later on. But you take the child, and you, when you first breastfeed the child, you breastfeed the child on the left-hand side. Because your heart beats boom, boom, right or wrong. So then that, the child is feeling that. That beat may sound like a Houdini song. Friends. <laughs> Whatever that song is that you got with your child. But now that child is feeling that while you breastfeeding. And all those thoughts and all those emotions... Going into the child. You follow what I'm saying? So the now the child, if it's a boy, girl, whatever, has to come into its own, its rites of passage, in its own time. Now the dad comes in and says, listen, okay, we have to go back. Guess where? Where do we have to go back to? No, we have to go back to that tree. All right? Because that's where you sat. We have to go back to that tree now. Take a branch, the bark, some part of that tree to make that drum. The child has to make the drum in order to go through its rites of passage. You understand what I'm saying? So now when the child has to go through the rites of passage and beat that drum, the child has to go get that monkey skin to wrap the wood. You all right? And play those beats to what song? <laughs> so that song is going to stay with that child the rest of that child's life. And guess what we do instead of beating the child to bring that child back into line with itself? We sing that song. All right? This is why in Africa, in Africa we built the villages in circles. Reminding us of the womb. Reminding us of completeness and wholeness. You follow what I'm saying? The child gets in trouble, we put the child in the middle of the room, and everyone speaks to the child. And we sing the child's praises. And the child brings itself in line. If you got to beat the child, you might as well let them go. Mm -hmm. Let them find their way on back. All right? We do that instinctively. Well, we don't realize we're doing it. Remember back in the day when you knew when to come in the house? What happened? <laughs> the street lights came on, right? And you knew when to come in the house. But what if you was from the backwoods of Louisiana somewhere where they didn't have street lights? You remember the little lightning bulbs they used to light up? Mm, yeah. That was your indication. Get your ass in the house. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> And they used to warn you if you watch them. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If you didn't pay attention to that, guess what your mother would do? Come to the door and call you by your full name. What's your name? Jerron Wolf. Jerron Aloysius Wolf. Bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> if you ain't going to know my name, my name is Aloysius. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Al. You trying to make it all hard. <laughs> <laughs> but you're talking about her calling your full name, man. It's like, damn, I'll see y'all later, man. <laughs> song that y'all sang she was in key and she called you by your name and that got your attention you understand what I'm saying and that's and that's, and that's real mm -hmm. you seen a woman who came and, and beat on her son in the middle of the uprising in Baltimore yeah mm -hmm. it's a disconnect there something happened 
Well, all my mom had to do was show the hell up. I'll be, I'll be right there in line. <laughs> the other so she was call my, call my name. Okay. There was a disconnect there. She had to beat the boy, and he was just protesting. You follow what I'm saying? But those are just some valuable lessons that was passed to me from my sitting at the feet of my elders. You may not get that in a book. You may not get it in a song. You're getting it just like this, the oral tradition from me to you. Now you got to remember it and pass it down. All right? Um, the tribe is called the Hembe tribe, that they do that particular thing. You'll see the women in Africa take mud and they cover their whole bodies with it because they're one and in sync with the earth. All right? All right, let's move forward. So we're talking about passing that on, the old to the new, via your culture, all right? We talked about this yesterday. I don't know if y'all was in the room. But I've seen, seen a few people like this. You know what I'm saying? And the only thing I'm asking is, how do I begin to have that conversation with old girls? You might have really hard. That must have been you like last year. You know All the time, right? And in order for me to approach her, whether I think she's fine or whether I just want to say hi or whatever, mm. how can I get past that? Mm. No, I thought like this thing. Come on now. Because it's something that she, she gave an energy to it. Mercy. She's not going to let me get past that. Because she says, well, I'm looking a hot mess. I'm, okay, well, no, nah, I got a boyfriend. I don't know. She might be lying to me or whatever. Because of the way she's feeling about herself. You understand what I'm saying? Has absolutely nothing to do with me. But I got to be able to get past that. All right? And I asked this question here. She's a New York City rapper who was black in the 90s, white in 2000s, and she's now Asian. See, instinctively, we already know that. All right? And I'm sure everyone has survived these, right? I <laughs> wish you survived these. Right? <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. In order to keep us in line, sometimes we had to go through this. Along with the extension cord. The switch. Oh yeah, the switches was the worst. Mm -hmm. yeah. My mom used to soak curves. <laughs> yeah. Real. How do y'all pronounce it? Now later. 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 That's the king's English. No. Now later. This is one word. Now later. <laughs> you ask young people say, Yo, just give me this one. They don't even say what it is. Let me just get something else. For real. Bro, I ain't going to pick on you. <laughs> but I know this was you. <laughs> right or wrong? Uh, on the phone, not no extension, not the cord. Oh, how old are you? 22. Oh, this is not you. <laughs> <laughs> no, this definitely wasn't you. Because they had cordless joints by the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you started even using it from that cordless joints. <laughs> right, for real. But it's a very real dynamic. We had to live this. But this is a part of the culture that kept us connected with itself. Mm -hmm. Why? Because that, that cassette tape was made out of some black dark substance which resonated with our melanin. Mm -hmm. And then when the tape popped, we had to become instant engineers mm -hmm. in order to put it back together. Mm -hmm. You had to rewind it mm -hmm. and be skillful. <laughs> put it back in and be on. <laughs> 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 but in order to go through that experience, you see, you will never have this experience, young man. How do you? Eight. Eight, you do this. <laughs> when you want to go to like song number eight, you just hitting a button right or wrong. <laughs> See, you got your Tims on, son, I'm saying. All right, but anyway, we're talking about that. Oh, did you check out my blue ones, man? Now, look at him. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, come up off those over there. <laughs> That's what used to happen in New York. Seriously. Anybody from New York ask you what size you wear? <laughs> You're like, my size? <laughs> and, and walk away. If they try to set you up, they try to get you. For real, I'm just saying. Yeah. All in Jackson, I'm not going to pick on you because his mom was in the audience yesterday, man. Oh, I remember these. I still got one of these. I got one of these. I'm like, okay, cool, I got you. But that's real. Right. All right. You got a refrigerator at home where you press the button and the ice falls through the thing and you put the I guess so. <laughs> See, this is an experience though. I remember. All right? And these were life lessons that we learned just via the culture. Mm. That little booger finger that you use, you will never use that to call anybody. <laughs> <laughs> For real. 
we caught hell trying. We, we remembered phone numbers back in those yeah. times. Yeah. 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 You had to. Because you just can't go to somebody's name and hit, you know, you have to remember the number. God forbid if you messed up. You had to start over. Oh. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just pick up where you left off. Oh, See, that caused the value. Yeah. And you notice that phone was big and black because it resonated with our melanin. All right? And we had to understand that in the real way. So, I want to send a message to one of your friends, and I really truly don't care if you tell them my phone number is 678-557-2919. That's this phone. And it's ringing right now, as a matter of fact. Call him and tell him I said so. He can call me anytime, day or night. I'm meeting at 7-Eleven, Whole Food, Wally World, wherever you, Target, wherever you want to meet me. All right, we're going to send this message out to your man. Dear Heavenly Father and Black History Jesus, we come to you this morning confused and disturbed about our brother Ben Coon Carson. Lord, this fool got up and said that slaves were immigrants who worked hard for less. They were on the bottom of slave ships and they had a dream. Can you please let this, this man know that slaves did not come over here on a Disney cruise ship, Lord, with hopes and dreams that their children would meet Mickey and Minnie one day, Lord. Lord, I know Ben Carson is a neurosurgeon, but we need you to fix his brain and his life, Lord. Ben Carson think Rosa Parks was sitting on the bus because she had bad knees, Jesus. Can you tweet Ben Carson from heaven and let him know that slaves didn't work for less. Many times they worked for nothing and they worked just to stay alive, Lord. Lord, we are not losing hope for our brother Ben because we know you are able. We need you to reach out and touch Ben. Grab that demon inside of him and say, get out! He has the spirits of coonery and buffoonery in him, Lord, and we need you to get it out of him, Lord. Ooh, I feel it. To be honest, Lord, I don't think Ben is going to change because he's been in the sucking place for too long. Go see the movie Get Out so you know what you're talking about. Lord, when it's all said and done, we are tired of Ben Carson and his shenanigans. He is the smartest, dumbest man in our race. That's why we are asking for a trade today, Lord. Let us have Bruno Mars and Justin Timberlake. They already got rhythm. They got black musicians in the band. We'll call them Black Bruno and Poetic Justin, Lord. Please hear our prayer today. And the next microphone that Ben Carson touches, let it go dead, Lord. We ask these things in black history in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> so if y'all know Ben Dover Carson, can you just send that? <laughs> can you send that message to him from me? We said yesterday that propaganda works best when when his target thinks it's just entertainment. That's right. When you're at the peak of you throwing a couple back and you're at the peak of enjoying yourself, I don't care if it's the club, the movie, or the comedy show, or whatever. When it catches you at that point, your cultural guard is down. That's when the cultural missiles start hitting your subconscious mind, not your conscious mind. Because a lot of y'all in here are smart enough to know y'all got that filter set up. You all know when BS is coming. But when your guard is down, all right, that's when it happens. And the cultural, the cultural uh, defect, I should say, that happened with black people, of course you know they got some cultural appropriation going on. White people coming into black people's culture, stealing our culture, turning around, Claiming it for themselves. Mm. All right? And, but because they have an um, infrastructure in place, you will think that they're the ones that invented it. <clears throat> you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we have a different lens, not only that we view the world through, but how we view ourselves. What they're trying to do is set up the lens on how we view ourselves. All right? But this happened with this situation in reverse. All right, listen up, y'all. I'm your substitute teacher, Mr. Garvey. I taught school for 20 years in the inner city, so don't even think about messing with me. Y'all feel me? Okay, let's take a roll here. Jay Quellen. Where's Jay Quellen at? No Jay Quellen here? Yeah. Uh, do you mean Jacqueline? Okay. So that's how it's going to be. Y'all want to play. Okay, then. I've got my eye on you, Jay Quellen. Balake. 
Where is Balake at? No Balake here today. Yes, sir. My name's Blake. <laughs> Are you out of your goddamn mind?